I was just about to tell you, the waiter said. The entire Chang clan did die. I meant that Chang Ping was able to avoid disaster for a while, but it was only temporary. After no more than a few years, the head of the Chang clan also died. His death was even scarier. Someone took a sword and subjected him to death by a thousand cuts. What is the death by a thousand cuts? I don't need to explain it, right? It's when someone takes a blade and slices off someone else's flesh. They make 3,600 cuts until all of the victim's flesh has been carved off and only a skeleton remains. Of course, we wish you knew about the death by a thousand cuts. If someone were to write a book called A Thousand Methods, of inflicting violent death, no one was more qualified to lift their pen than him. He raised his hand. I understand. So, brother, do you know the reason that the Chang clan was annihilated? I heard that some of his fellow cultivators deliberately planned the whole thing. It had to be them. Otherwise, how could a bunch of living cultivators be unable to escape? Someone or something must have trapped them inside. The owner of the liquor store was deathly afraid that Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji would become unhappy with the conversation, so he offered them a couple of small platters of complimentary peanuts and roasted seeds. Wei Wuxian nodded in thanks and cracked open some of the seeds as he continued to ask questions. Did anyone ever discover the specific people or things responsible? The waiter laughed. Young master, are you joking? How could we ordinary folks who live hand to mouth, just trying to get by, understand the business of high and mighty people who fly around in the skies? I mean, you two are both cultivators. You should understand the situation more than me. I've only heard people's loose chatter. It seems like the Changs probably offended someone that they shouldn't have offended. In any case, from that point onward, there's been no one to deal with the ghouls and ghosts around Yue Yang. Someone they shouldn't have offended? Wei Wuxian said thoughtfully. Yes, that's right. The waiter ate a couple of peanuts. All the stuff about which sect or clan has a debt of gratitude or grudge against which other sect or clan is all very complicated. By my reckoning, the Chang clan must have been targeted by other cultivators. I mean, it's pretty common for people to be killed and their treasures stolen, right? That's what all the folk stories and novels say. I don't know who it was exactly, but I think it had something to do with an infamous villain. Smiling, where we should brought bowl to his lips and shot him a side long glance. Let me guess, you're about to say that you don't know who the infamous villain was. The waiter laughed. No, sir, you're wrong about that. That I know. I think he's called the Lao Guai. Oh, Lao Tzu. The Yiling Lao Tzu. The Yiling Patriarch. Where we should choked on his liquor and spat a splash of frothy liquid back into the bowl. What? Him again? His family name is Wei. I think he was called Wei Wu Qian. Whenever someone brings him up, they always sound so scared and full of loathing. Wei Wu Qian repeatedly searched his memory and grew confident about two points. One, in his past life, he had never come to Yue Yang. And two, out of all the people that he had killed, none of them had died of death by a thousand cuts. Filled with disbelief, he turned and looked at Lan Wangji, as though he wanted an explanation. Lan Wangji had been waiting for this expression for a long time. Let us leave. Immediately, Wei Wuxian understood that the man had something to tell him, and it wasn't easily said while they were at a liquor store surrounded by others. He rose. All right, let's go then. As for settling the bowl, 
It's already been settled, right? Brother, I'm going to leave the liquor I bought here for now. Once we're done taking care of business, we'll come back and continue drinking. Half joking, he added, make sure not to cheat me, okay? The waiter had already eaten most of the platter of peanuts. He protested loudly. How could we do such a thing? The store treats all our customers fairly and honestly. Leave them here and don't worry about them, sir. We won't close until the two of you come back. Hey, young masters, are you about to head over to the Chung house? Wow, you're amazing. Even I, a local, haven't been over there. I only have the guts to sneak a peek from afar. Are you two sirs going to enter? What are you going to do? We're also only going to sneak a peek from afar, where we should reply. The waiter had a very outgoing and perhaps overly friendly personality, and stopped treating Wei Wuxian like a stranger after a single conversation. He approached him and draped an arm around his shoulder. Do you two sirs find your jobs tiring? Is the pay high? It must be, right? You look so respectable. Can I ask something? Is it hard to get your foot in the door? I, right in the middle of his blabbering, the waiter suddenly slammed his mouth shut and looked in the other direction, trembling in fear. Young master, the person next to you, why is he staring at me? He said in a hushed voice. Ryoushin followed his gaze in time to see Lan Wangji turn, rise, and proceed toward the liquor store's exit. Oh, him. Well, my friend here was raised in a very strict and proper household. He hates seeing people throw their arms around other people in front of him. It's a bit strange, isn't it? The waiter withdrew his arm and whispered bitterly. Yes, it's strange. If you just saw the look in his eyes, you'd think I'd thrown my arms around his wife. It was impossible to speak quietly enough to escape Lan Wang Ji's keen hearing. But what the man was thinking at the moment was unclear. Yerushin tried so hard not to laugh that his innards ached. I finished drinking a jug, he hastily said. Huh? the waiter asked. Yerushin pointed to himself. I'm standing. Finally, the waiter remembered his own promise to adopt the family name of anyone who could still stand after drinking a jug of the store's liquor. Hurriedly, he said, Oh, oh, this is uh, amazing. I'm not flattering you. This is the first time I've seen anyone who can still stand up straight and talk coherently after finishing a jug. What's your family name then, young master? My, Wei Wuxian said, before suddenly recalling the waiter's mention of Wei Wuxian earlier and having second thoughts. The corner of his mouth twitched, but he calmly continued. My name is Lan. Like Wei Wuxian, the waiter also had thick skin. His face didn't even change colour as he shouted. Yes, from now on, my family name is Lan. Underneath the crimson store banner, Lan Wangji's figure seemed to briefly lose its balance. An evil smile stretched across the entirety of Wei Wuxian's face, and he walked over with one hand held behind his back. Then he patted his friend on the shoulder. Thank you, Hang Guangjun, for kindly footing the bull. I made him take your family name. After leaving the city, the pair walked in the direction that the waiter had pointed. As they travelled, the number of people on the road gradually decreased, and the forest grew thicker. Why didn't you want me to keep asking questions back there? Wei Wuxian asked. I suddenly remembered that I had heard of the incident involving the Yueyang Cheng clan. There was no need to continue the inquiry. Before you tell me the story, let me ask for your confirmation. I wasn't responsible for the uh, extermination of the Cheng clan, was I? Setting aside the fact that ten years ago he had already been long dead, 
and the fact that his soul had been very content with its resting place. He couldn't have been so bad that he could kill an entire clan without remembering it. No, Nanongji replied. Oh, Weiru Shinse. It was as though he had returned to the time in his previous life when everyone had been after him, when he passed his days more miserably than a rat in the gutters. Everything bad had been blamed on him, and any shitty label thrown at him had stuck. If the next-door neighbor's grandson wouldn't eat and lost a couple of kilos, they'd even blamed that on him, claiming that the scary stories of the yielding patriarch using the ghost general to murder his victims had scared the child into losing weight. Unexpectedly, Lanongji spoke again. You did not kill them, but their deaths had some relation to you. In what way? Weirishin asked. Two ways. First, one of the people involved is closely linked to your mother. Weirishin immediately stopped. He had no idea how he felt or what expression he was making. My mother? He asked hesitantly. Weirishin was the son of a servant of the Yunmeng Zhang clan, Wei Changzhe, and a wandering cultivator, Sangzhe Sanren. Zheng Fengmian and his wife were both close acquaintances of his mother and father, but Zheng Fengmian had never reminisced about his old friend in front of Wei Wuxian, and Zheng Fengmian's wife, Yu Ziyuan, had never been interested in having a conversation with him at all. If she didn't whip him a few times and tell him to get out, kneel at the ancestral shrine, and keep far away from Zheng Cheng, he already considered that pretty good. Most of the things Wei Wuxian knew of his mother and father, he had heard them from other people, and he didn't know much more than they did. Lan Hongji also stopped, then turned and caught his gaze. Have you heard of the name Xiao Xingchen? Wei Wuxian thought carefully. No, I haven't, he concluded. No, is correct. He left the mountain and became famous just 12 years ago. No one mentions him any longer. 12 years ago was precisely one year after the siege of the burial mounds, so Wewishin had just missed it. Which mountain, he asked, who was his teacher? I do not know which mountain. However, I do know the name of his teacher, Xiao Xingchen was a disciple of Bao Shen, Sun Ren. Only then did Wei Wuxian understand why Lan Wangji had said that this person had a close link with his mother. So you are saying this Xiao Xingchen could be considered my sect uncle? Sang Se Sun Ren was also a disciple of Bao Shen, Sun Ren. Bao Shen, Sun Ren was a cultivator who lived and practiced in seclusion from the rest of the world. It was rumored that she was a member of the same generation as Wen Mao, Lan An, and others from that era. The souls of that generation's great figures had long departed, and their bodies had long since turned to dust. But Bao Shen Sun Ren had yet to perish, according to the rumors. If this were true, she had to be many hundreds of years old, which meant her level of cultivation was beyond exceptional. Back in that earlier time, the world of cultivation, led by Wen Mao, had started to become organized by family line, and the sects of masters and disciples, connected by shared teachings, but not shared blood, way. The power of blood ties grew like new bamboo shoots after the spring rain. All remotely famous cultivators began to establish their own clans, except the distinguished Bao Shen San Ren, who chose to return to her native mountains and enter seclusion. That was how her cultivation name became Bao Shen. But which mountain she had embraced, no one knew. Though, of course, it could only be called seclusion because no one knew. 
If anyone could easily find her, it could hardly be called seclusion. While living in seclusion on this unnamed celestial mountain, this cultivator from generations past would often secretly descend and bring back a few abandoned children to become her disciples. But every disciple had to make a promise to single-mindedly pursue cultivation and never to leave the mountain and enter the profane realm. Otherwise, regardless of the reason for their departure, they would never be allowed to return. They would have to rely on their own talents to handle the strife and struggles of human society. Their teacher and fellow disciples would no longer have any ties to them. Everyone said that Ba Shan Sanren was worthy of her illustrious reputation and the foresight that she had shown in establishing this rule was truly remarkable. This was because, in the coming centuries, only three of her disciples had left the mountain. Yanling Daoren, Sang Se Sanren, and Xiao Xingchen. All three had reached bad ends. What had happened to the first two disciples, where Wishin had known since childhood, and had no need to hear again. Thus, what Lan Wangji told him, comprehensively and concisely, concerned only the past deeds of his sect uncle. When Xiao Xingchen had left the mountain, he had been barely 17 years of age. Though Lan Wangji had never met him, he had heard others describe the youth's grace and elegance. At the time, the Sunshot campaign had ended only a few years ago, and the storm stirred up by the siege of the burial mounds had only just passed. Each of the big clans were running wild, trying to recruit new talent. Meanwhile, Xiao Xingchen had left the mountain with hopes of saving the world. His skill was extraordinary, and his teacher was illustrious. The first time he had gone night hunting, he had faced the mountain that was the hunting ground on his own a sword in one hand and a horsetail whisk in the other. He went on to earn first place. Thus, his name was May. Upon seeing this bright, disciplined young cultivator with such immense talent, every clan became completely enamored with him, and one after the other asked him to join them. But Xiao Xingchen tactfully rejected each one making it clear that he did not wish to tie himself to any clan. Instead, he joined up with his best friend, and they poured their heart and soul into establishing a new sect. A sect that would not attach value to bloodlines. Xiao Xing Chen's character was like a reed. Outwardly, he was soft, but his heart was firm as stone. Moreover, he lived a clean and honest lifestyle. In those days, if anyone ran into a difficult issue or a thorny problem, the first thing they thought of was to ask for his help, and he never delayed, nor did he ever refuse. Thus his reputation soared atop high, flying winds. The massacre of the Yueyang Chang clan happened just at that time.